Good morning, everybody. I hope you had a wonderful uh, um, weekend and the, the summer weather treated you well and you weren't involved in any of the storms or fires or anything else that's been in, uh, all over the country. So um, we uh, have a lot to talk about today, lots of different topics. Uh, we're going to talk about what to do with the yappers, people who talk too much. We're going to talk about a couple of new enhancements that we have to the system. And we're going to begin the call with um, ECA's life insurance underwriter and expert, Ben Rowe, to kind of bring us up to speed on any uh, new developments in the life arena. So, Ben, hit us with your best shot. Thanks, Mike. I um, just wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, some updates we've seen. Um, Industry-wide, right now, uh, it's a it's a bad time for uh, underwriters typically to go on vacation. Um, so we've got you know, when we call in for an update on a case or try to get things done. Sometimes we've got underwriters that are out for a week, or they're covering for other underwriters that are out for a week. Um, so right now, just kind of as a general, uh, until about September, uh, when kids are back in school, it can be a little slow to get some underwriting answers. A um, couple of companies have been doing really good. Uh, Prue and Voya, I think, are probably around the top as far as uh, not being too too far slowed down by it. Um, I think Principal's up there too. Um, some of the ones that we've seen have really gotten slow. Um, would be American General. Uh, they actually lost the, their chief underwriter left, and uh, so they're looking for a replacement there. And they've had a couple other underwriters uh, leave as well. So I know they're hiring several. So we've seen some very slow times with American General. Um, and then Transamerica and Lincoln Financial, we can expect a little slower times from them as well. Um, other than that, other carriers, typically it's three to five days. You might see it go a little longer than that as far as, you know, when the last requirement goes in, um, usually we're getting an offer within a week. Um, sometimes it's going a little longer, though, now because of, the, of all the vacations that happen in the summer. So um, other than that, there's no, not been any real big changes as far as uh, product updates or, or other industry trends. Um, just the normal, normal summer backlogs of uh, just a little bit of slowness. Um, one other thing I wanted to talk about today, too, is uh, the MIB. Um, so MIB is the Medical Information Bureau. Uh, they report, it's basically an anti-fraud uh, database. Um, for that insurance companies use. So anytime you're sending an application in, that underwriter, when they get that review, they're going to put a report and an inquiry into MIB. Um, MIB is going to send them back a list. Sometimes there's nothing on it. Um, it only has anything on MIB if they've applied for insurance in the past and have had some adverse uh, note in their file. Um, all they all they house is very vague codes on what uh, what the insurance company found in the past. So if you have a client who five years ago applied for disability insurance uh, or life insurance or critical illness, any other any other type of a uh, life or long term care coverage, um, and they had some note, sometimes it's simple. It'll it'll note uh, CAD cardiac disease. Um, sometimes it'll note uh, elevated uh, liver function. They don't give the values. They don't give any decision that was made. They don't say if it was rated or declined. It's just a flag saying, hey, make sure that you have some information on this. And uh, the insurance companies look at that, and they, they might say, oh, yeah, uh, you may say EKG abnormality. That's all the flag is. So they're going to look at their EKG. They're going to look at the medical records, and they're going to see. Uh, they're either going to see it, or they might say, well, this one says uh, elevated liver functions. But we don't see anything in the history, nothing like that. So they might ask a couple extra questions. You know, has the client ever been treated for this, or did they, you know, when they applied for insurance in the past, you know, what was the outcome? Um, so really, it's just a it's just a mechanism where they can catch uh, catch things um, and and try to prevent fraud. So what what might come up there, and what typically comes up, is they might have a, an indication of drug use or uh, alcoholism. Um, that might have been reported in the past. So when, when you get that client that's uh, filling out the application and says, nope, they don't smoke, nope, they don't never use drugs, then that application gets sent in. Uh, if there is a MIB hit that has some different information, that's when it can cause problems and we have to do some extra, uh, extra replying to. Now, the, it's never a, a thing that's going to be used solely to uh, decline someone. So it's something that we would gather the information, ask any additional questions, and if there's uh, if there's any explanation or, or additional uh, doctors that can be found to help answer that, 
then we would get that over and have the have the insurance company look at that and review it. So if there's uh, if there's any questions to what I'll do, I'll send the link over to Missy to send out after the call uh, to the MIB. Um, you can re request a re your own report. So if you have anything on there, you can see what it is and and kind of learn a little bit about it. Um, if you ever have clients that that wonder about what theirs is, uh, they can request a free report either by phone call uh, or an email, or uh, not an email, uh, they have a link on their website. Um, so I'll send that link over to Missy to, uh, to send out after the call. And if there's any questions on that, I'm, I'm open to, uh, to help answer anything uh, related to that as well. Um, that's what I had for updates today. Uh, if there's any Perfect. questions I can uh, answer, um, otherwise have a, have a great rest of the call. Looks like they're pretty quiet today, Ben. So you did a good job. Thank you very much. Great. Appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh -oh. Let's see here. If a red flag may appear, should we send an LOI to uh, inform the carrier ahead of time? Um, there wouldn't necessarily be a need for that. Although, if uh, if you do write a cover letter, if there is a if, if there is some unusual situation, you can el basically eliminate any question on it by being upfront. Just write a quick cover letter. If you need help with that too, I write cover letters you know, on a weekly basis uh, to help address things. So if it's a DUI history or something you think might cause a problem. I would always recommend writing that that cover letter, because then when they get the MIB report and they say, "Oh wait, he's got this history," oh yeah, I remember seeing that on the cover letter. They they mentioned that. Yeah, it's not a big deal. Um, so Perfect. they're gonna that can that can help eliminate you know weeks of problems going back and forth answering questions and ordering additional records. So I always so if there's something a little bit letter. wonky, if there's something a little bit wonky, they can give you a holler and you can help them do something like that. Yep, absolutely. And I'll tell them what questions to ask the client to make sure that we answer all the questions up front and we can take care of any follow-up questions basically on that cover letter. Perfect. Thank you very much, Ben. All right. All right. Thank you. Okay, we're off to uh, some other topics here. So we'll cover, uh, work our way through here. Next thing I want to talk about is the 21-point checklist and make sure that you're all aware that we have uh, this website. And I didn't know that uh, if, if you guys were all aware that we did have that. So this is uh, the website 21 point checklist you can send them to. So it, it looks like it's a third party, which it is a third party. So it doesn't have your uh, information or anything like that. But it does talk about who validates the information in the 21 point checklist. So the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau validates it. The U.S. Treasury validates it. The leading research company, Harris Interactive, validates it. The Library of Congress validates it. Uh, Dodd and Frank Section 19 uh, validates it. The Securities Exchange Commission validates it. Uh, so, so it's giving them all sorts of validation why the information inside the 21-point checklist is valid. And we also, a lot of guys have started to use this video, but we've updated the video, and I wanted you guys to have a look at what that video looks like. So we're going to play it. It's about a 10-minute video, but this is an advertisement that you could use for uh, the 21. And I, we're actually having a little system that we can use with it next week that we'll talk about. But you can use this any number of ways to validate why the 21 makes sense. It's something you could send to your current clients. Uh, you could something you could uh, send to prospects. Uh, it's something you could uh, refer people who are going through the process to because it just validates what we do here. So I'm going to play the video, and here we go. Is it the little things or the big things in life that get us? It's the little things. We see the big things coming. It's the little things that fly under radar, the things that we don't see until they happen that throw us for a loop that can cause a lot of problems in our lives. I mean, I'll, I'll give you an ex a quick example of that. Let's say that I need surgery. So I, I find a doctor and he agrees to do surgery. So he does a surgery, does a fantastic job, sends me back to the recovery room, sends me back to my room, and says I'll be out of the hospital the next day. It's amazing what medicine can do now, getting you uh, into major surgery and out the next day. So he did his job. He did the big thing. But let's say somebody forgot the little thing. Let's say somebody in housekeeping, somebody in uh, food services forgets to wash their hands. Seems like a little thing as compared to the surgery, but if they forget to wash their hands, I could get an infection. And those of you that have experienced it or have known people who have experienced it, getting an infection in the hospital can put you there for weeks. So a little thing turns into a big thing. And it's not just at the hospital. It's in our everyday lives. Let me give you an example. Uh, powers of attorney. These are documents that we have so that if bad things happen to us or our loved ones, we're able to still handle their affairs. For example, if, I, uh, uh, if my spouse is incapacitated, I'll still be able to get access to their, their uh, IRA, their 401k, or their accounts so that we can use that money to help us through those bad times. 
if I don't have that power of attorney, then I have no access to my spouse's IRA. And that can cause a real problem in people's uh, uh, financial uh, lives and uh, everyday lives. And the reason I bring this up is you need a power of attorney, but many people have a power of attorney, and they think they've done their job, and they have. But here's the problem. In the last couple of years, banks and brokerages, the people who have your IRAs or your, your 401ks, have found little technicalities that will, pre, will allow them to prevent you from accessing that money. So even though you'll have a perfectly legal power of attorney, they will still reject that perfectly legal power of attorney. And if you think about it, it makes sense. Because do you ever use the power of attorney to deposit money into an IRA or to take money out of an IRA? You use it to take money out of an IRA. So they have every reason to want to reject your power of attorney. And the little technicalities they found is they said, oh, listen, we don't know if this is the actual power of attorney. So we don't want to be sued. So we're not, gonna, we're not going to accept it. So here you have a perfectly legal power of attorney, and they won't accept it. So now what do you do? You have to go to court. You have to hire an attorney so now, to get access to your own money. That's crazy, but they're doing it every day now. Every day they do that. So how crazy is that? You now have to spend time and money to get access to your own money when you have a perfectly legal power of attorney that they will not honor because they don't want to let go of your money. They've forgotten whose money it is. And here's the thing then why aren't attorneys talking about this? Well, I don't know. Let's think about this. You pay them to do the power of attorney, and then if the banks and brokerages don't honor it, who do you have to pay again? Think about it. So how angry would you be when you thought you had your affairs in order, you thought you had your power of attorney, and you march into the bank, you march into your broker, and they won't honor your power of attorney? You did your work, but they're playing games with your money. That's crazy. And it doesn't stop there with your power of attorney. Did you know that the Social Security Administration, the Veterans Administration, the IRS will not honor your power of attorney unless you have specific language that they require in that power of attorney? And what do you think the likelihood that the Social Security Office, the uh, Veterans Administration, the IRS, all government agencies all use the same language? You're right. They don't. It's all three separate languages. And guess how many powers of attorney have any one of these languages, let alone all three? Virtually none. And you will need your power of attorney to deal with the Social Security Office or the Veterans Administration or the IRS if a spouse becomes incapacitated. And if you don't, you're back to the courts. You're back to the uh, hiring attorney. See, it's these little things that can really get you. So when I was researching this for my clients, being a financial advisor, I found what's called a 21-point checklist. And it's, it's things that are going to disappoint you, irritate you, and make you darn right angry when you look at these things that have been forgotten. These are 21 things that, that our advisors forget. Our advisors don't notice because they're under the radar. You only find out about them when these things happen to you, which by then it's too late. And let me give you an example of, of, of why it's important. Let's say that uh, my daughter just graduated from college and she gets a job 1,500 miles across the country. So I'm going to be a good father and get a little perk for being a good father. So I'm going to give her my 10-year-old car so I can go out and buy a new car. So when I give her the 10-year-old car, my wife says, well, you know, you better bring that to the mechanic because she has to drive all the way across country to get to her new job. And I say, no, 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 that car has been great for us for 10 years. It's, we, we don't need to get it, uh, to take it to a mechanic. All he's going to do is tell us all sorts of things are wrong with it and want to get And the wife says, well, something's wrong. We need to get it fixed. I say, no, I just took it for a tune-up last month. It's running great. We don't need to take it for a, a, a checklist. So I don't take it for the checklist. And then my daughter takes off, and we get a call at 2 in the morning, and she's stuck in the middle of nowhere. So now what am I thinking? Oh, my gosh, I should have got that checklist done. See, when you do a tune-up, they're looking simply to tune up the car. They're not looking for things that could actually go wrong. And now I've got to fret about, oh, my gosh, how am I going to help my daughter find a mechanic? She's out there by herself. Uh, I'm, I'm worried about her, her uh, safety. But we, we get that taken care of. We find a mechanic, and the mechanic says, you know what? If you just would have had a mechanic go through this, you would have caught that before you took off. Where am I sleeping at night? My wife is going to have me for lunch, isn't she? See, I should have had them go through a checklist to look at all the things that could possibly break down. And just because they do the checklist, 
I'm in control. I don't have to 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 uh, get the things fixed that they point out. I, if it's air conditioning, I may say, hey, she can live without air conditioning. But it's something that's going to uh, cause her danger, worn brakes, a tranny that could fall out, whatever. I'm going to get those things fixed. It's something I need to know. When I have that information, I'm in control. And that's what the 21-point checklist does for you and your finances. See, you all have good uh, uh, um, advisors. You have good attorneys, I hope. You have good bankers, good financial advisors, good insurance agents, good accountants, and they do pay attention to the big things because we all pay attention to the big things, but they miss the little things. These 21 things that, uh, that um, the U.S. Treasury, the United States Library of Congress, the uh, U.S. Uh, Consumer Protection Bureau, they all said you need, Americans need the information in the 21-point checklist, and virtually no Americans have that information. See, the system is working against you. They, they keep the little things below radar so you don't know about them until it's too late. And then it costs you money, time. So you have good advisors, and they're catching the big things. But there are little things that are underrated that you don't miss that the 21-point checklist covers for you. So I'll, I'll give you some examples. These are four examples that aren't even on the 21-point checklist. This is in addition to the things that are in the 21-point checklist. Missing Social Security benefits on top of your normal Social Security retirement. Many people don't realize they can actually get two Social Security benefits in retirement, and they don't even know about it. Needlessly paying taxes on your Social Security income. Virtually nobody knows that they can opt out of paying taxes on their Social Security income. Did you know that insurance companies have snuck clauses in where they won't pay for the replacement cost of your roof anymore? So you may have to replace your roof, and they'll only pay $2,000 out of the, the $12,000 bill. Did you know they've done that in the last couple of years? And most people don't even know, and it happened right under their noses. Did you know that banks aren't telling their customers about a simple form that will double their protection, and it's for free? Just All you have to do is ask the bank for it? So these are four things that aren't even covered in the 21-point checklist. Just think of the 21 things that are out there that people don't know about. And it, not knowing about it is a dangerous thing because they're going to sneak up on you, they fly in under radar, and by the time they happen to you, they throw your and turn your life upside down, and by then it's too late to take care of it. Just like my daughter going across country. See, the big things, you can see them coming from a mile away. You can see those things coming from five miles away. That's why everybody find, uh, watches those things and takes care of those things. But it's the little things that can cause problems. If you remember the Challenger catastrophe, the space shuttle Challenger that blew up, what caused that? They had all the big things right, but it was a little $6 O-ring, a little $6 O-ring out of this hundreds of millions of dollars of equipment and training, etc., that caused this tragic event. A $6 O-ring, the little thing that flew under the radar, and it's the same thing with our finances. See, the 21-point checklist puts you in control. By knowing the 21 things and those other four little things that I showed you, by knowing uh, that these things exist and then choosing what you want because you're in control. You can choose what you want to fix and what you don't want to fix, but at least now you know and you can make informed decisions. That's what's put you in control. That's what puts you in control of your finances. That's what puts you, put you in control of your future, and it prevents ugly surprises from turning 30 or 40 years of hard work upside down. So don't get caught by, uh, in a situation where something flew in under radar. These little 21 things and the other four things that I showed you that flew under radar and catch you by surprise and turn all your hard work upside down. Find out about it before it happens. Get your financial advisor to do a 21-point checklist for you as soon as possible. So we have a few questions on that. Um, one is, uh, what is the form that will double your bank protection for free? I love these questions because these are things that if you guys don't know about it, what do we know about the public guys? They don't know about it. In fact, <laughs> I, would get, I would put this question to 100 advisors and I, put, I would bet a lot of money. Most of them couldn't figure out what it is. The form that will double your protection with, um, uh, for free is basically, it actually double, quadruple, whatever your protection for free, is that if you do a uh, POD at the bank, Guess what that does to your FDIC insurance? So if I have 15 accounts at the bank with my name as the primary and 15 different uh, PODs, 
what happens to my protection? What happens to my protection, guys? That's right, Gary. Times 15. Ah, good. I'm getting a lot of wrong answers there. So Gary got it right. It, it, it means my protection goes up by 15 times. POD is paid on death. So with the POD, guess what? The FDIC insurance protection treats that as a separate account, even though I'm the primary on it, and my son, my cousin, my neighbor, whoever was the POD on there. So uh, if I have three kids, I can get three times the protection. If I, or I can uh, uh, have my wife split the account again and have my wife as owner and, and uh, me as owner, and then we get six times the uh, account. So basically what happens is that every time you do a POD, the FDIC insurance covers that account and tra tra uh, treats it as a, a, a separate account. So do you get that? Does anybody not get that? So your FDIC applies to that, even though so that means I personally am the owner of the account, so I'm protected with it by FDI insurance every time I'm, uh, for every one of those accounts. So that's what we're talking about. Does everybody get that? And then, uh, oh, Missy, can you talk about people who want to use this uh, video on their website, how they do that? Yeah, I sure can. So um, if you want to actually embed the video into your website itself, which means that the video will just play as soon as um, someone goes to your website, you can um, have just the image of it and then the video will will just play directly from yours. We can give you the little code that just needs to be put on your website. So you'll have to um, work with either whoever handles your website or if you do it yourself, you just take that little piece of code and you can put on your website. Or you can um, certainly link it directly to the public link um, where the video will play from that public link. It doesn't look quite as nice if you do it that way, um, but I can give you either option. So just let me know what you would prefer, and I can send you over both the code and the link, and then you can work with your website people and, and get it the way that you'd like it to display. And then several people have already done that already, so would you talk to the fact that that actually has already been replaced on there? Website. Correct. So um, a few people, a uh, few of you agents have already been using that code. So when we update the video, um, it just automatically will push the new video to your website. So if you had the code from me originally, um, anytime we would make a change to the, the video, it just automatically updates your site. So for those of you that have had it for the last uh, few months or six months or whatever, um, you'll see this new version as opposed to the old video that used to be there. Perfect. So any other questions on that before we move on? And why the change? Because the, this one looks way more professional than the other one, that's why. Yeah, we, we we get the uh, the unneeded. So guys, <laughs> we get that there's uh, uh, some spelling. But for all you that are looking at spelling, I'm I'm asking, what are you missing? So here's the, here's the thing that drives me crazy as your coach. I've got 15 people telling me about these misspellings, and I've got less than that talking about what. The big picture, how to use it. Yes, Tony, exactly. So, did, yeah, I, I, so don't get me wrong, guys. I appreciate the misspelling, but if you're pointing out the misspelling, why don't you also be thinking, who gives a crap about the misspelling? How could I freaking use this thing? Okay? <laughs> it drives me bananas. Yes, I want to know about the, uh, about the misspellings, but dudes, let's keep your focus on what we're trying to do. Are we trying to be English specialists here, or are we trying to figure out better ways to make more money. So next week I will have, um, uh, and, and there wasn't one person that showed, I mean, geez, what do we have, Missy? 20 people pointing out the uh, misspellings, but we've had three people wondering about how we can use this thing. So, right. <laughs> guys, please, please, please. So we'll get the misspellings fixed, but I'd be more interested in hearing how you think we could use this. So next week we're going to talk about how we can use this to capture people who don't make appointments at the 21 or I'm sorry, at the uh, outside the box. But what's the first thing I talk about people, uh, to people who don't get uh, appointments at the 21? What do you think the first thing I say to them is? Hey, this is a great way to get go back and recapture those uh, 
Appointments, what do you think the first thing I say to those people are? Yeah, Tony, right, get better at presenting. Because we have over half the guys now are getting 50, I'm sorry, 80 to 100% appointment ratios. And we have less than half the guys getting less than that. So if you're at less than that, and, I, and we have to use the, the little system I'm going to show you next week, the plan is not to have to use that little system. The plan is to make sure you get the 80 to 100% appointment ratios in the first place. Uh, can we put this on our business Facebook page, Missy? Now that's a great that's a great question, Bob. That one I love. Um, possibly. Uh, it's a, it's I, a link, so if you could put a link. It's, I was going to say, to be honest with you, I'm not sure how that would be done, but I'm sure it can be. Yeah, I'm I'm sure it's possible. Can be, so. Okay. Cool. So any place where you could put a link, you could put this. Yeah, Bill, that's that's between you asking me what your BD allows and doesn't allow. Guess what? One BD will allow, one won't. One will say maybe. One will. Do, all BDs are different. So your BD problem is whose problem? <laughs> your BD problem is your BD problem, and your so so that's why I'm not a, a huge fan of, of BD. So you have to figure. I'm sorry, Bill. You're gonna have to figure that out for yourself. So any other questions this before we move on? Cool. So we'll get a couple of uh, spellings uh, fixed here in the, in the next uh, next week. But I tell you what, people, uh, do you think the misspellings will prevent people from uh, getting the concept of this video? No, I agree, Paul. Thanks. So we got one one no. Thank you, Paul, for the only, the only person who actually got that answer right. So here we go to the next part of the. Oh, we got two. Thanks, Jeannie. <laughs> So, oops, oh, shoot, now I have to get back to here, here, there we go. Aha, the next thing I want to talk about is uh, we have a new presentation up as well. So if we go here and go to the member content, and we go to, everybody see the website now? And we'll go to implementation meeting. And under the implementation meeting, we now have the fixed, in, fixed index annuity presentation, which is for uh, uh, FIAs that have the 50% participation cap. And we have the fixed index annuity presentation for the uncapped strategies. And then we have the one-way selling presentation for the hybrid life uh, long-term care. So you have three different um, uh, presentations now. One is the uh, uh, life long-term care um, uh, da -da -da -da, uh, hybrid. Then we have the uncapped for FIAs and 50% cap, participation rate cap. So this is the new one right here. So all of these are about an hour long. Why are they all, a lot on, all an hour long? Why, let's see, let's see if we have anybody with a thinking cap on. Why are all those presentations an hour long? Yeah, Jim's right. He, he says we want to deal with all the objections up front, so I'd agree with that. Uh, one meeting, I'd agree with that, Roy. We want to get it all done, and it's it's just one meeting. Lots of questions, Tony and Rick. Ax absolutely. We're going to have the client sell this to us over the next uh, over the hour. And do you think, uh, if I want to cover all the objections, is all you guys are getting good answers here. So if we want uh, the the um, client to cover all their object own objections, to think about this out loud so they don't say, I need to think about it at the end. Because if they, we spend an hour on it and, and the client's, are answering all of our questions, they're thinking about this out loud. And if they think about it out loud for an hour, guess what they do at the end of the hour? They buy. Do they ever say, I need to think? If you ask questions of them for an hour and they answer all those questions, answer all those questions correctly, and they will if you know these scripts, they'll answer exactly. It's, it's, like, it's like you hand them the script. They will answer these questions exactly like you ask them. I mean, it, it, it's like you've handed them the script. If they do that for an hour, what will they do at the end of the hour? Get it, exactly, Jeannie. So any questions on that? So you can go there and take a look at it. So the new one is the uh, fixed index annuity FI presentation, 50% participation rate. Okay, so now we're gonna talk today about, I don't know if I can get back to my little PowerPoint. Oh, mm -mm -mm. okay. Chatty Cathy's, what do we do with Chatty Cathy's? So Chatty Cathy's are those people who talk and talk and talk and you ask them a question and they'll go on for, for uh, five minutes, 10 minutes, and they go out into left field, and they talk about things that we're not talking about, and all you want to do is say what? Zip it. So what do you think I talked to when, I, when somebody says they have a chatty Cathy? Mike, 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 
And I've been dealing with this for 15 years with guys telling me that they have a chatty cafe. How do I deal with it? And I just want to tell them, shut up or to zip it. What do you think I tell those folks, guys? What do you think I tell the advisor when they tell me that they have one of those? Let's see if we can get this. You got it, Gary. You got it, Jim. Uh, nobody's getting it here. So you guys are right when you're saying GOTS, but before, that's how you do handle it. That's how you do handle it, but here's what I tell you guys. You are the problem. Every time I listen to, to uh, people uh, that tell me that the client talks and talks and talks, when I listen to the tape, guess what I find out? Is the client really the problem? Or is the advisor enabling them? Yeah, Casey, you feed them. <laughs> you feed them. You start, you, 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 you add kerosene to the fire. You, you throw some steaks to the, to the tiger. You keep feeding them. You, that's right, Jim, you egg them on. So the thing is, you are the problem, but you are also the solution. And we're going to listen to a tape here on, on how we would do that here in a few minutes. But before we do that, let's talk about this. Why are they talking? There's two reasons people do a lot of talking. I'm not denying that they do a lot of talking, but the reason that I say you're the problem, and we'll go into this a little bit uh, when we listen to the tape, is that uh, you're actually egging on or feeding it, some of these guys said. Nervous. Okay, good. Nervous. That's one of the things. So, Bill, you're right. They're, they're nervous. They're insecure, Paul. Exactly right. Ah, and then Robert got the other one. They want to impress. So, one is they're nervous. And the other is uh, they want to impress. Why do they want to impress, guys? So there's one that's nervous and insecure. The other person is they want to impress. Why does that person want to impress? Well, as you see here, that's right, love. I have a baby, a freedom pass, and a wooden leg. Mind if I take your seat? Uh, you're right, Robert, so they can show us how much they know. Why do they want to do that? Why do they want to show us how much they know? You're right, Rick. Show how smart they are. Well, those of you, those of you that have had one of these people, and this is the tape that we listen to, is actually one of these guys. Do you guys have a friend who's like that, who loves to show you how much they know? Do you guys ever? Do any of you guys have friends who he's the guy in your group that always wants it? He's got all the details. He wants to tell you how much he knows. He's always got it. He's an expert on everything. You, ever, you, you guys have friends like that? So with those people, do you pay them any attention? What does everybody in the group do with that guy? You know, after, after five years of this guy, what does everybody ignore them, right, Gary? They start to ignore them. They tune them out, Rick. <laughs> so, so what does that do to these people's needs to get even more smart and even more impressive? They talk even more. Yeah, so the thing is, uh, when they come in, the reason they're talking is either, number one, they're insecure or nervous. Or number two is they, they feel the need to impress because nobody in their life gives them credit. That's right, Jim. They're starving for appreciation. They're seeking approval, Michael. Exactly right. So there are people who are uh, uh, talking because everybody in their life just discounts everything they say. So, But here's the great thing. The solution to both those people, whether the nervous people or the people who feel under, underappreciated, uh, the solution is the same. And somebody's already said, what's the solution for both of them? What's the solution for nervous people? Gots, yep. What's the, serv uh, the solution for people who know it all? Gots. See, gots is the f solution to both of them. Okay? So wh what, though, of all the gots, let's, uh, what is the weakest gots we have? What is the weakest gots we have? Just to say, yeah, that's right, Bill, just agree. That's right, Jim, just agree. Say, yeah, exactly. Hey, right, you're right. That's the weakest. What's the second? A parrot is the second, Tom. That's right. Parrot back is the second. But what is the, the as the picture shows here, what is the, ah, the best gods? Show that you're brilliant. Yeah, show them that. And the way to do that is tell them they're above the average Joe. So which one do you think we're going to use for these talkers? The, the first most powerful, second most powerful, or the third most powerful? The above average, exactly right. We're going to use the above average because that really is. So what we're going to do is, as you probably heard, so what do we do when, they, when we first recognize them as a talker? How long do we let them talk? 
and this is approximate, you don't look at your watch or anything, but approximately how long do you let them talk once you've identified them as a talker? About three minutes, yep, about three minutes. And then we g jump in with GOTS and we, we look for an opportunity to really get on their side and say, man, you're a genius, you're, you're above average, you're, 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 you shine compared to everybody that's out there. And then we transition out by saying, hey, and that reminds me, and boom, we go to, uh, to our next topic. Then after the three minutes, if they do it again, how, how, how long do we spend? So if they do it after the three minute, we get on their side, then we go two minutes, exactly right. Then we do the same thing. After two minutes, we get on their side and we say, wow, you're brilliant. I can't believe you thought about that. You're, you're way above average. And we'll, sh we'll show you how to do this here in a second. But then, and then we say, transition out by saying, hey, and that reminds you, or did we talk about it? Or, and it's amazing when you do that. If you pat them on the back, guess what they think about your transition out? If you really, really, really get on their side, pat them on the back, tell them that they're brilliant, do they even notice the fact that you're transitioning out? They don't even notice that. All they want, either, either they're nervous or they're seeking attention. And either way, what have you done for those folks when you do that, when you get on their side and tell them they're brilliant? They're happy as can be. So when you transition out, there's no problemo. Okay? And then after the three, so we start with three minutes, get on their side. They do it again. Two minutes, get on their side. Do it again. One minute, get on their side. And after that, I've never heard an advisor who's done that who has not taken control. Why would they, why would... Why would the people calm down after the third time you've done that? Really stro stroke their ego three times. What, what would, why would, after three times, would they just calm down and let you conduct the meeting? Once they're fed, you're not hungry anymore. I would agree with that, Jim. They trust you. The, you yeah, that's all those things that you're saying. They're satisfied. That my advisor gets me. All those things. They appreciate, <laughs> they see you appreciate their smarts. I love that one, Robert. So, so that's why it works. Now, here's the problem when I listen to people when they, uh, when they get on people's side. So, and you'll, you'll see this here in the tape, but when, let's say somebody's talking about um, their daughter and the fact that their daughter's going to school and, uh, you know, and the, uh, for, maybe you're talking about powers of attorney or whatever it may be, and the, they, they get off on the tangent about their daughter going to school and, you know, she's getting really good grades and, you know, she's going to become an attorney. Guess what people want to do? Advisors, guess what? Guess what? Who they, the advisor will start complimenting? They'll start complimenting the daughter. They'll start complimenting the daughter. Is that getting on their side if you start complimenting the daughter? Look at this diagram here. That's right. Who, if, if they're talking about their daughter and how great her, their daughter is and that she's going to go to law school, give me some examples of how you could, uh, brief examples. I know you're typing these things in. Give me some brief examples. Yeah, you're right, Victoria. She may be, if we start patting the daughter on the back, it could boomerang because that mother or father might get jealous or say, yeah, and they don't even appreciate me and blah, blah, blah. All, you're exactly right, Victoria. Oh, very good. Yeah, so Jeannie comes up with a good uh, idea. You, re, you raised her. Perfect. Reflection on them, Paul. Exactly. Yeah, so everybody's getting, the, yeah, good job. So that, yeah, you're a brilliant parent. So you guys are getting it. So you want to compliment them on, on their ability to be a parent and raise a child like that not the child. So what if they're, uh, here's another thing that advisors will do when, the, to, to, uh, uh, when this happens, is the, the, the client will be talking about, um, well, I think the market's going to go up, and, and, and it's for this reason, because uh, I think the PEs are, are very reasonable right now. And the advisor will jump on board and start telling them why they're right, and start talking about what. So they get on their side, and they start telling them that they're right, but they start talking about what. So the client says, yeah, I think that the market's going to go up, because, yeah, the market, exactly. Uh, they, you start talk, you start to be smart and tell them how much, uh, tell them why you think the market's going to go up too. Is that getting on their side? It is, kind of. But that's not what we want to do here. If we're trying to, sh to, to quiet a talker down and, and have them give you control of the meeting, what do we want to talk about? If they're talking about the fact that PEs uh, are, are, are normal right now and we think they're going to go, yeah, them. So what could we say about them? Boy, you're a brilliant, you know, it's obvious you do a lot of reading, which all my clients would do, the reading that you do. You know, you, you have insight that my clients, you know, all you do is tell them how smart they are. Does that make sense? Like your proactive research, right, Jim? So you want to tell them how smart they are. So when you're getting on their side, if it's a talker, when you're getting on their side, what are you looking for? How much time are you looking to get on their side when you're trying to transition out of a talker from a, a topic you don't want to be talking about? How long do you think you want to talk about, get on their side? 
and tell them that they're above average. I'd, I'd shoot for three minutes, absolutely, I'd shoot for three minutes because you'd end up with what? A shorter time, right. So you might end up with one. If you shoot for one, Tony, what are you going to end up with? <laughs> None, exactly. You'll end up with a, a 10 second, uh, oh yeah, you're really smart. By the way, <laughs> you can't do that. You can't do that, okay? So we're going to listen to uh, any questions of this before we get right into it. We're going to listen to a tape. And I, first of all, I want to compliment the guy who sends this tape. And this is a guy who's uh, actually doing the 2% better. He's sending me a tape every single week. He is, uh, and, and when we do a tape, he's getting 2% better, if not more than that better, every single week. The, the, the improvements he's made over the last uh, 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 three, four months is unbelievable. And guess why he's made those improvements? Because all of last year, he's improved more, actually, uh, in, I'll tell you straight out, he's improved more in the last two weeks than he improved all of last year. Sorry about that, Todd, but it's true. So he's improved more in the last two weeks than he did all of last year. And this is not a dumb guy. This is a top-notch advisor. This is a guy who's very successful. But he didn't really focus on getting better uh, uh, in the way he's doing now. And now every single week, he is making an improvement, sometimes small improvements, sometimes huge improvements every single week. So first of all, kudos to him for sending in tapes and then actually not just listening to me, but actually implementing those, those changes. So we're going to listen to his uh, tape here with a guy. And this guy is a uh, yacker. Oh, super, Jeff. Jeff said he just bought his uh, recording device, so that's super. So here we go. So, and you'll see this guy absolutely is a talker. Time. Hey, thank you, by the way, for these statements. I appreciate you guys getting those. I've kind of put together a report for you. Okay. Um, but really, today, the goal is just to really help you guys get a little bit better idea of where you are currently. I'm going to jump forward here. And to see if everything you... So, if you weren't sure about this one, you go down the lower one, but... Did you ever dive off there? Oh, yeah. 35. You did. Did you ever think of, when you dove, there was a piece of rock down there, and when you dove, it would go like right, right through your head and into your stomach? I you never thought about like that. that. I don't yeah. think about it now. Miserable. Think, Are you, listen, uh, you know, I, when I was a kid, uh, they, they had the, like. Okay, guys. <laughs> what is this guy already? We've only listened to about 20 seconds. What has he identified himself as? We're about three minutes into the meeting. What has he identified himself as? Yeah, he's a storyteller, talker, whatever. So, so uh, here we go. He's two barrels, so you could go past it. I, I went swimming, and then I came up for I couldn't take any more. I came up. I came up right underneath the barrel, and I was stuck. I didn't know what to do. Oh, jeez. Oh, geez. I didn't know what to, I had no idea what to do. Inside the barrel? No, no. Okay, so first of all, Todd's doing the right thing. He's going to let him talk for three minutes, right? So this guy has not talked for three minutes. He hasn't even talked for one a minute yet, so he's doing the right thing. But I want to use this as a suggestion. Let's say this was later on in the meeting. Remember what we talked about where, where we are the problem and we feed in? So the, Todd's not doing the wrong thing here. He's doing the okay thing because he, he wants to listen to this guy up front, give him three minutes to kind of... Uh, talk about things, but I just want to use this as an example of, of how we can feed the machine. So I'm going to go back here a little bit, and then watch what Todd says. Again, he's not, you get, he's not doing the wrong thing here. This is the first time the guy's identifying himself as a talker, so he wants to let him talk for three, or, you know, three minutes before he gets on side, but, but I want to give you these are perfect examples of how we can sometimes feed the animal, and we don't want to do this, so here we go. So if you weren't sure about this one, you go down the lower one, but did you ever dive off there? Oh, yeah. 35 you did. Did you ever think of, when you dove, there was a piece of rock down there, and when you dove, it would go like right, right through your head and into your stomach? I, I never thought about like that. that. I don't even think about it now. Think, listen, uh, you know, I, when I was a kid, uh, they, they had the like these two barrels so you could go past it. I, I went swimming and then I came up for I couldn't take any more. I came up, I came up right underneath the barrel and I was stuck, I didn't know what to do. Oh geez. Oh so what do you say there? Oh geez, which is our way of saying what? Tell me more. And again, you get that right now Todd's not doing the wrong thing. This is 
he's only he hasn't given him his three minutes to talk it out. But I just want to use this example. And this is what I hear guys do throughout the whole entire three-hour meeting when they say, "I couldn't get a word in edgewise." No, you kept feeding the animal. Quit doing that. Jeez, I didn't know what to, I had no idea what to do inside the barrel. And then we do what? We actually say inside the barrel. Tell me what? More. So again, Todd's doing an okay thing here because he, we need him to talk. This is his first time. He uh, is going to let him go th uh, three minutes. But it, th this is an excellent display of what we don't want to do down the road when uh, people are telling stories and we've had enough and we need to move the move, it, move, move the meeting along. We don't say, oh, geez, oh, really? And then what happens? No, 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 no. Because what you're saying is, hey, tell me more. Now, there's another thing that advisors do. Guess what that is? This is even worse. See if anybody can get it. Join in, right, Victoria. Yeah, what do you mean by that, Victoria? You're right, you're right. What do you mean by that? <laughs> that's right, you guys. That's right, Michael. Tell them a related, yeah, I think everybody's getting it. Tell them your story. You're going to one-up them. You, well, that, you let me tell you what happened to me. And then you'll tell me, Mike, I, I don't know what's wrong, because then these people are talkers. No, 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 no. You're the talker. So Todd's not doing that. He's just being polite and encouraging the guy to tell more, which is fine this early, but I wanted to use that as an example of, of what we don't want to do if we really don't want, if it's gone on long enough, don't encourage them. Don't add kerosene to the fire. No, no, underneath, but the barrel, uh, you know, you come up to get the air, and yeah, the yeah. barrel's there. Oh, it, was, it was just like that. And listen, that guy that was with the shark yesterday, you see that? Yeah, yeah. They called him a hero. They called McCain a hero. Those guys ain't heroes. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you want to know what a hero is, you have to see that movie. They came to Cordoba with Gary Cooper. He's the guy in charge of getting all these guys, the guys that did something that made them stand out of the ordinary in war. Oh, guess what I could have done right there. So if he, if he talked long enough, is this guy going, geez, we've gone from da diving to the sharks to Gary Cooper. Has he, uh, have we given him enough room at this point? Have we given him enough room? Yeah. So now what I would do is I would jump and say, ah, oh, geez, Frank, I, I, I wish everybody, I wish everybody had your kind of insight. I mean, the fact that you can realize, hey, hey, you know what? You're real, you see the fact that everybody's out there saying, oh, these are heroes, these are heroes, these are heroes. But you've got a mind of your own. You don't listen to that kind of stuff. You know what, what a hero is. You know what, what uh, uh, is impressive in somebody's character. You know, I wish everybody had, didn't, wasn't it just that lemming that followed everybody else's and the whole political correctness, but actually knew what was right in their mind. So that, that's, that's terrific, Frank. You know, and that actually reminds me of the next thing we need to talk about. So how would he feel if I did that to him? I got one great, a couple greats. So, and, and, and would he even recognize the fact that I transitioned out? Even though, do you think the next thing I want to talk about has anything to do with what he wanted to talk about, guys, or what he was talking about? Does he care? No, because all I did, and I'll tell you straight out that this guy, there's some background here that, uh, that, that Todd and I talked about that validates this guy as somebody who, who really cares he goes way out of his way to let people know how smart he is, so we know what side of the spectrum this guy is. Do you think he's a nervous guy, or he's a guy that loves to be noticed as being smart? And guys, think about this guy. Just from what you've heard so far, do you think his friends listen to his stories all the way to the end, or do you think they tune him out? Just uh, We're only into this for five minutes. We've only listened to him for how long? Do you think... <laughs> yeah, I agree. So, but... So all he's looking for is a little validation, and, and Todd had some hints that this guy, that's the kind of guy he is. And so, and, and he is a smart guy. This guy is a smart guy, so all we need to do is let him know that what? Hey, dude, I know you're smart. And what does that do to that itch to be recognized? Because here's the thing, especially guys like this, this guy is a smart guy. And, and there's a lot of women uh, who I, I call battle axes who... They've accomplished a ton of stuff in their life, and whoever gives them credit for this guy credit for being smart, whoever gives these women credit for doing the things that they've done under against all odds, does anybody give them credit for that stuff? When was the last guy this guy got credit for being smart? So all we're doing is give him credit for what a actually he is, and these uh, battle axes for what they are, and these grumpy old men for what they are. Because you know what? I'd be grumpy. 
I'd be a bad ex too if nobody gave me credit for all the stuff that I did. So guess you're the first person in their life who actually said, you know what, Mrs. Smith, you know what, Mr. Smith, what are you saying? You're the first person in their life that said, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, you're what? A phenomenal human being. I cannot believe that you know the stuff that you know, or I cannot believe you've done the things that you do against all odds. Just, boy, when you do that, guess what happens to these folks? What do you think happens to these folks? They are friends for life. Friends for life. Okay, so we'll keep listening here. So do you see right there, he could have easily jumped in and done that. So we'll keep listening to look for other opportunities here. Okay. And they, they were thieves, murderers, and so forth, but they did that one act to make them, and, but half of them were wanted by the police and this and that. Mm -hmm. So Gary Cooper got them. So he's going into this, how, what happened with this whole movie now, and, and what is Todd doing that we probably wouldn't want to do? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. He's yeah, pa he's listening patiently. Yes, which is normally what we want to do. But at this point is it clear that this meeting is going off the rails? So what we want to do is kind of jump in there, scratch at it. Why is this guy talking again? He's not talking cuz he wants us to know what happened with the Gary Cooper meeting. He's talking cuz he wants to be validated for being the smart guy that he is. So all we need to do is validate him for being the smart guy that he is. Does that make sense? And if you just validate him for being the smart guy he is, he's, he's happy. He's happy. And you'd think, Jim, that he's looking for a listening ear. He's not looking for a listening ear. That's, that's the mistake. That's the mistake we make as advisors. We think they just want somebody to listen to, to them. No, that's not what they want. What do they want, guys? It's not somebody to listen to them. It's, it's somebody who will what? Appreciate them. Validate them. Approve of them. Exactly right. That's what he's looking for. He's, he wants to feel important. So listening to him, does that help him feel important? Yeah, I would agree. To a, to, but do you think, how does just listening to them compare to actually jumping in and telling him that he's a genius that he is? Which one, which one is more powerful? Just listening to him or jumping in and telling him he's a genius? For the reason that, you know, for, for which one? Jumping in, that's right, jumping in. So he gets what he wants, which is acknowledgement, acknowledgement validation, approval, and we get what we want, which is to get the meeting back on what? That's a win-win. But if you listen, what do we got? Uh, a little bit of a win and a loss for us. Okay, so here we go. Take them to another place to get their medal. All the way they're trying to kill him. <laughs> oh, gee. They didn't want to be known. Oh, gee. But they did something to make them stand up. What? I'm, I'm sorry to say it, but what did uh, 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 what's his name uh, uh, McCain do? He got know. shot down. He broke his arms and legs shooting down, and he was treated royally. He was treated royally because his father was an admiral. Okay, so whether you agree with this or not, is there ways to get on inside about that? Again, another opportunity. You know what? Again, I wish people would see things clearly. It's very clear to me that you're one of the few people I talk to that see things clearly, that just jump on, that don't jump, jump on the political correctness bandwagon. You look at things, you evaluate things, you don't take anybody's word for it. You make a decision based on what you believe, and I wish people had the, the, the moral strength to do that. I wish that people had the, the, the strength to just uh, evaluate things for themselves, make, make their opinions known, and not just follow everybody else like a little lemming over the cliff. So the you know the fact that you do that, Frank, the fact that you are a man a man of your own means, a man a man of his own decision making, uh, a man who has his own opinions. I wish everybody the world would run so much better. I find so many people who are not like that. So that man that really really uh, hits me right here, uh, Frank, because I, I wish everybody was like that. And in fact, that actually brings up the next thing we need to talk about, which is so there was another opportunity to what? Now, did I agree with him on, when I did that? Did I agree with him all about about John McCain? So does that mean, could I agree with him, even if I don't agree with his opinion, could I get on his side, tell him that he's, a, tell him that he's smart without even agreeing with his opinion? Yeah, which is what I did, right? So do you see how you, now, when I'm doing that, am I, egging, am I giving him what he wants? When, both those times that I did that, am I giving him what he wants? Am I being rude? How about am I being rude? 
and am I getting back on track? So do you see how that works? We're at the top of the hour, but do you see how that works? Now, uh, and Todd will fully admit this, when Todd sent this tape to me, guess what he told me? God, this guy was a talker. I don't know how I could have got him on, on track. All he wanted to do was talk, 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 talk. And I, is this guy a talker? Todd called it like a son of a gun. But what Todd did was basically he, he um, addressed it the same way we all do, which is think, I don't want to be rude, so I'll just go ahead and what? Listen. That's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. Listening is not a bad thing. But that's not what the guy's looking for. He's not listen, looking for somebody to listen to him. He's looking for somebody to validate him. And if we can do that, if we can get him what he really wants, which is the validation, and get what we want, which is to, to um, get the meeting back on track, that's what we want to do. And do you see how if I did that three times, what do you think is going to be fine? His, if I do that three times the way I did there, get on his side and tell him that he's a genius, how long before he's going to start just letting me take over the uh, meeting? Soon. So I, I have a question. So you'd only do this three times max? So guys, do this three times. If it doesn't work, send me the tape, and what am I going to find out? Mike, I did this three times and it didn't work. What am I going to find out 99.9999% of the time when it didn't work? That, yeah, that you fed them, that, there, that, there's no, that you didn't do it what? Right. Now, let's say that you did do it. Let's just, for, for arguments purposes, let's say that you did do it right. Well, then what do you do if you, it didn't, if you did it three times? And he still does it again. What will you do it, guys? Do it. Uh, what will you do it, guys? Keep doing it. Do it again. But realize how often does this guy want to continue? Do you think he, when I get on his side like that, the only thing he can be what what would be? Let's when I get on his side about how much of a genius he is. Think about this. If I get on his side about what about how big of a genius he is, what's the only way for him to continue that conversation? That's why this is a, an ingenious way to do it. See, what's the only way? I get on his side about being an, an, a genius. So, oh, geez, Frank, I can't believe I wish everybody had your kind of insight. I wish everybody had your, your ability to, to see through this political correctness we have today, to, to make up their own mind, to analyze things, not just to be a lemming and follow everybody off the cliff. You are a man's man. You are a man who makes it. The only way he's going to, what can he do after that? Oh, yeah, you're right. I am a genius. I am a man's man. I am. The only way for him to do, to get on, to keep the conversation going is to, to start espousing about how what? Great he is. Is he going to do that? Is he going to start bragging about how smart he is? He's not, he's just looking for you to recognize it. He's not going to get on, uh, he's not going to start to continue the conversation about how smart he is. Yeah, I, I mean, I am a genius. I am, I am a man's man. I, you know, I, I don't follow, he's not going to do that. Because that would sound what? And if he starts to sound boastful, what is he afraid you'll quit doing? Does he want to boast about himself, or does he want you to boast about him? He wants you to boast about him. Does that make sense? So do you see, guys, how this methodology will work to, to uh, get those talkers back on track in a manner that they win and we win? Will this work for people who want to argue at every point? Well, when there is, what, what's the only person that can argue, guys? Here's the thing. Guys, if you've got somebody who's arguing, then, then what's the problem? If you have somebody that's arguing, what's the problem? Everybody, everybody, right now, I want you to do this. I want you to take out, if you have a big black magic marker, and I want you to take out a piece of paper, okay? And I want you to write that. I've, I've had many of you write this, but I want you to write it, and I want you to put it on your 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 uh, morning mirror where you shave, I want you to put it up in the bathroom where you go every day, is this. There is no point worth making, I'm sorry, I'll take that back. Any point worth making, any point worth making must be made by what? Any point worth making must be made by them. So if we're following the scripts and doing it right, and they're making all the points, who are they going to argue with?
Who's the only, if they're making all the points for us, who's the only person they can argue with? Themselves. Exactly. Now, let's say, and I make mistakes all the time. So I make mistakes all the time. So let's say that I do make a mistake, and I actually make a point. I shouldn't have, but I make a point, and they argue. Then all I do is I get on their side about the point they made. And if I get on their side about the point they made, what happens to the argument? If I'm telling them that they're smart and, and the point they're making is absolutely right on target, what happens to the argument? It's, it goes away. So the way that you handle somebody who's arguing is just to what? Get on their side. And I would agree, Tony, that this is the most powerful way to get on their side, absolutely. So if somebody's arguing, then the, the, I'm going to use the most powerful uh, tool I have in my arsenal, Tony, so you're absolutely right. This is the Tony, or t this is the Tony. <laughs> this, is the, um, this is the actual tool that I would use. It's the, the most powerful one should tell them they're above average. Absolutely. So you're exactly right, Tony. But the big thing is, if I've got an argument, I need to reevaluate, am I doing all the point making or are they doing all the point making? Make sense? Super. So is this helpful, guys? Is this something you can actually put into uh, use sometime this week? Coolio. Awesome. I went a little bit long. Thanks for sticking with me. You guys have a great week, and we'll talk to you all on Friday. Thanks, everybody.